Welcome to the Blade Attack Channel's 78th edition and second year of Space Attack Rewind. We are reviewing the milestones that occurred on each day in the week of December 6th to December 12th in space exploration, science, and technology. December 6th, 1958, the U.S. Army's moon probe, Pioneer 3, in cooperation with NASA, was launched on a Juno 2 rocket from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station's Launch Complex LC-5 on this date. But due to the early depletion of propellant, the probe fell back to Earth after reaching 65,000 miles in space. Although it failed in its first objective of a lunar flyby, NASA still considered the mission a scientific success because its detection equipment provided two almost complete cross-sections of space surrounding the Earth. The Pioneer 3 probe data, in addition to the data from the previous Explorer 1 and Explorer 3 satellites, led to the discovery of a distinct second radiation belt around the Earth. The trapped radiation starts at an altitude of several hundred miles from Earth, where the outer belt was first observed by Sputnik 2 and Sputnik 3, and extends for several thousand miles into space. These radiation belts surrounding the Earth are named for American Dr. James Van Allen, in honor of his discovery. December 7th, 1972, Apollo 17 was lifted to its lunar mission on a Saturn V rocket from the Kennedy Space Center's Launch Complex 39A on this date. The capsule was the CSM-114 and the lunar lander was LM-12. The total mission duration was 13 days. Apollo 17 was to be the final Apollo lunar mission, as Apollo 18 was to be canceled in July of 1973. Apollo 19 was canceled in December of 1973, and Apollo 20 was canceled in July of 1974. The final Apollo mission, which was to only low Earth orbit, occurred in 1975. The Apollo 17 crew was Cernan, Evans, and Schmidt. Cernan and Schmidt descended to the lunar surface on December 11th. The rover was deployed, and then three separate EVAs were undertaken over the next two days. The primary objective was collection of surface and core samples, which might have been different if NASA was aware that this was to be the last lunar mission. 48 years later, the Apollo 17 mission is still the last NASA manned mission to the moon. December 8, 1931, the inventors of coaxial cable were issued a U.S. patent on this date. Coaxial cable is a wire that consists of concentric conductors separated and sheathed in insulators. The inventors, Lloyd Eppenscheid and Herman Affel, worked for the old AT&T, who retained rights to the patent. The application for which coaxial cable was designed was television for which a wide range of transmission frequencies is required. Whereas individual channel requirements for telegraphy are of the order of a few hundred cycles at most, and telephony perhaps a few thousand cycles, television requires bands of hundreds of thousands of cycles in width to ensure a reasonable degree of picture detail. We previously covered the beginnings of cable TV in Milestones 117 and Milestones 147. Enjoying our content? We issue new videos every week, so be sure to subscribe so you stay current. Subscribing is free, and we encourage you to browse our 350 plus video library where you can find more milestone installments for every day of the year, as well as tech documentary segments, current events in space exploration, science and technology, gameplay recordings, reviews of tools and equipment, and reviews of small electronics and appliances. Each video is tagged with an alphanumeric identifier in the title, so searches for particular segments are quick and easy. December 9th, 1921. Tetraethyl lead, or TEL, was first given a laboratory test as an anti-knock additive to gasoline fuel on this date. This use of lead was discovered by Thomas Midgley Jr. of the General Motors Research Laboratories. The discovery came after seven years of testing at least 33,000 compounds. The knock in the one-cylinder laboratory engine was utterly silenced, 
Even at a strength of only 2-3 to three grams per gallon, it had a remarkable ability to quiet the relentless knocking. Previously, on hard acceleration, an engine sometimes made knocking, popping, or cracking sounds, which sapped power and could damage the engine. The additive was first put on public sale as ethyl gasoline on February 2, 1923. Unfortunately, the efficacy of tetraethyl lead in gasoline would result in catastrophic consequences. TEL is highly toxic, with as little as 6 to 15 milliliters being enough to induce severe lead poisoning. Concerns over the toxicity of lead eventually resulted in a ban on TEL in automobile gasoline in most countries, including the United States. Some neurologists have speculated that the lead phase-out may have caused average IQ levels to rise by several points in the U.S. by reducing cumulative brain damage throughout the population, especially in the young. For the entire U.S. population, during and after the TEL phase-out, the mean blood lead level dropped from 16 microgram per deciliter in 1976 to only 3 micrograms per deciliter in 1991. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control considers blood levels elevated when they are above 10 micrograms per deciliter. December 10, 1901 At the first Nobel Prize award ceremony, the King of Sweden distributed the first Nobel Prizes on this date in accordance with the will of inventor Alfred Nobel. The day was the anniversary of Nobel's death. We covered Nobel's bequeath of his estate to the Nobel Foundation in Milestones 147. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences had decided on November 10, 1901 to award the first Nobel Prize in Physics to William Rentgen for his discovery of X-rays and the first Nobel Prize in Chemistry to Jacobus van Hoff for his work on the rates of reaction, equilibrium, and osmotic pressure. The first Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine was given to Emil von Behring, for his work on serum therapy, particularly for its use in the treatment of diphtheria. Have you agreed with our choices, or do you think there are other events in space and tech history that were better? Go ahead and share with us by dropping a comment below. If you have suggestions for other space and tech milestones, let us know. We'll credit milestones we pick for future videos to those viewers that post them. And don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. December 11, 1998, the Mars Climate Orbiter was launched from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station's Launch Complex 17A on a Thor rocket on this date. The Mars Climate Orbiter was the second flight of the Mars Surveyor Program. The probe was to enter a polar orbit around Mars on September 23, 1999 and begin operations by November 23, 1999. The orbiter's insertion burn began as planned on September 23, but communication with the craft was almost immediately lost. Subsequent investigation showed that the spacecraft had plunged deep into the Martian atmosphere, burning up in re-entry 35 miles short of the surface. An analysis of the mission ruled that the cutbacks and tracking station funding, combined with an embarrassing use of an embedded lookup table that used U.S. standard measurement units and software that was expecting metric values, were to blame for the mission failure. December 12, 1961, the first amateur satellite, the Oscar-1, was lifted to orbit on a Thor rocket from the Vandenberg Air Force Base's Launch Complex 1W on this date. The satellite, designed by a group of ham radio enthusiasts in California, had hitched a ride on a mission that was primarily to deliver the Discoverer 36 surveillance satellite for the U.S. Air Force. The 10-pound satellite was box-shaped with a single monopole antenna and powered by a battery rather than a solar panel. The 140 milliwatt transmitter on board discharges batteries after three weeks. 570 amateurs in 28 countries reported receiving its simple Morse code signals on the 144.983 megahertz band until January 1st, 1962. Oscar 1 re-entered the atmosphere on January 31st of 1962 after 312 orbits. The Oscar I mission led to the creation of the Radio Amateur Satellite Corporation in 1969. The organization, headquartered in Kensington, Maryland, USA, continues to this day.
On November 4th, 2021, satellite company Astra Space filed an application with the Federal Communications Commission to deploy a constellation of more than 13,600 satellites that would provide broadband services. The first phase of the constellation would involve 40 satellites in an equatorial orbit at an altitude of 700 kilometers. A second phase would launch 2,300 satellites at the same altitude. That would allow the company to provide global service. A third phase with 11,300 satellites would operate at 400 kilometers in altitude to provide additional capacity. The company would presumably launch its constellation using a variant of its Rocket 3.3 vehicle. On November 20th, 2021, Astra's Rocket 3.3 booster LV-007 successfully reached orbit after launching from the Pacific Spaceport Complex in Alaska. The rocket was carrying a demonstration payload for the United States Space Force. It was the company's first successful launch. Astra Space has three launches of its Rocket 3 series planned for the first half of 2022 and is currently developing a successor, the Rocket 4. We hope you enjoyed the 78th episode of Blade Tech Space and Tech Rewind. If so, click that like button. Once again, don't forget to subscribe or just stay in touch by following us on our microblogging accounts, which are listed below, the community feed for this channel, our Instagram feed, and our Minds page. We announce all new videos and post some unique content on those outlets. And if you prefer an alternative video distribution source, consider visiting our channel on Rumble. Thanks for watching.